gaze at me and you will see what the curse of drink has done. Once I had a husband, a child, and a home, but now I'm all alone. Just an old bag woman standing on the corner of Church Street. Oh, but I was so young and my friends so false. Just one cannot hurt you, they cried. So they started me there with a chocolate eclair and ended with an Eskimo pie. I was full of laughter and scorn. I thought I could take it or leave it alone. My uncle said, Nelly, lay off that vanilla. Those phosphates will drive you astray. And then one night, everything was quiet. The baby was asleep in his crib. And there was my husband, Oscar Meyer, snoring like 27 trombones. And me? I was watching TV when all of a sudden came this crazy guy talking about ice cream. It's soft, it's smooth, and oh, so delicious. We've got vanilla, chocolate, oh, that's so good. And we have your strawberries, Rocky Road, and for the first time on TV, pistachio. Pistachio? That's right, lady, pistachio. Well, I ain't never had none of that. Then I got a hand. I jumped out of the chair, and I put on my coat, and I put on my slippers, and I slinked with a slingful slink down to the apothecary shop. Apothecary, that's high class for drugstore. Ha, 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 ha. Hello, Joe. What's new in Kokomo? Step away from me, Lassie. You're bothering me. Lassie? <laughs> Lassie's a dog. You raise one leg, and I'll chop him off tail. Oh. What it be, lady? Lady? <laughs> I'm no lady. Well, lady, who are you then, Snow White? Yeah. I used to be Snow White, but I drifted. I'll have a banana split. Give me three scoops of ice cream, vanilla, chocolate, and pistachio. Cover it over with whipped cream, some nuts, and I'll have three cherries. Cherries? Lady, cherries are very expensive. Lady, there we go with that lady. Those cherries will cost you extra. Why? Because. Cherries are very expensive. They are? And to think I gave mine away for nothing. Hi out there. I'm June Carr Orman, and I'm here to share some of my vaudeville routines with you. You see, I've been in show business practically all my life. There's no business like show business. Yes, my mother and father were both in show business. My mother was an ingenue and a dancer, and my father was known as a top banana. Yes, a comedian. I've worked with Sophie Tucker. I've worked with Bob Hope. I've worked with Milton Berle. And oh, and I've worked with Russ Colombo, a good friend of mine. He wrote a song and dedicated to this young lady that he was in love with, Hannah Williams. But he never ended up with her because she went off and married Jack Dempsey, the heavyweight fighter of that day. And here is the song. How much do I love you? I'll tell you no lie. How deep is the ocean? How high is the sky? How many times a day do I think of you? How many roses are sprinkled with dew? How far would I travel to be where you are? 
How far is the journey from here to a star? And if I ever lose you, how much would I cry? How deep is the ocean? How high is the sky? My husband Ron and I had the Three Stooges on tour. Boy, they were really a riot. And we also made pictures with Sunset Carson, Lash LaRue, Fuzzy St. John, Don Red Barry, Julia Adams. And Bella Lugosi was a good friend of ours. Every time he came to our house, he would kiss my hand. Ooh. <laughs> well, I could go on and on. In fact, I will later. But let's go back to the soda shop, the apothecary, and find out what's going on there. Aha! There you are. Imagine coming down here in just your slippers and your nightgown. Yeah. You know what you are? No, what am I? You're an ice cream aholic. <laughs> and I disown you. I don't want anything more to do with you. I'm leaving my bed and board. Yeah, that's right. Your bed is like a board. Go! And don't darken my door no more. But what about my baby? Don't worry. I'll take care of the baby. But I want to see the baby. Where's the baby? Mama. 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 Then my husband hollered, Go, go baby, go. go. And I never saw either of them again. <gasps> so now I'm back on the corner of Church Street selling apples. Just an old bag, woman. Oh, say, here comes a customer now. Hello, officer. How are you? Would you like to buy an apple? They're only five cents. Here's your nickel, young lady. Well, if I put it in the bag. Thank you. this apple. Well, what do you expect for a nickel, a dinosaur? The world is full of talent. Talent's just the thing that I possess. All the stars in Hollywood are jealous of me, cause where their talent ceases, mine increases. What they want is novelty, something to astound. But when they look for novelty, where do you think it's found? Behind the fans of Sally Rand or under Dolly Parton's chin. All that meat, no potatoes. Yes! I was 22 years old at the time, and boy, was I busy. I was working in London and Paris and Australia, but then one day the funniest thing happened. Ron and I were working in Wilmington, North Carolina, and we had pups. We had pups. Cliff, my father, in between us, and I was rubbing him this way, and he was saying, make a larger circle, make a larger circle, and all of a sudden, Ron hit him on the back and his teeth flew out and he's standing there with no teeth and he caught him in his hand well that audience was a riot you never heard such a laugh in your life so the manager come back he says keep that in we've never had a laugh like that in this theater before pop says oh no i'm not going to have a move my teeth like that he says if i break my teeth i won't be able to eat anything so so he says so the day that i did my show with bob hope Pops was with me, and it was going to watch everything that I did. He said, maybe you'll lose your teeth. 
Uh, what have you in dinnerware? Oh, you should see it. I just got it last week at the Paris model. It's got little cap sleeves with ruffles down here, and the buttons run all the way down look, the back. Look, yes. I want to buy some plates. Uh, would you be interested in our economy plates? Economy plates? Yes, uh, you see, the food is painted right on them, so you never have to buy any food. You really save a lot of money that way. <sighs> the food is painted right on the plates, so you don't have to buy any quite a saving. Oh, yes. But supposing you paint on roast beef and my guests don't like roast beef. No, that's simple. We furnish you with a food eraser. <laughs> you erase it and paint on anything you like. Now, that sounds interesting. May I see some of them? Oh, they're not ready to be shown yet. <laughs> well, have you any plates at all I can just sort of glance at? Oh, yes, we have those unbreakable dishes. Unbreakable? Hmm. Uh, would you like a demonstration? Yes, I'd like to see some plates. <laughs> you see, Mr. Ames from the music department has to demonstrate the dishes because I throw left-handed. You throw left-handed? Why, well, yes, all the dishes are right-handed dishes, except the bullion cups, and they're for either hand. Uh, which would you like, the male or female cups? Male or female cups? I didn't know there was any difference. Oh, yes, there are she cups, and then there's he cups. Uh, Miss Rain, <laughs> uh, demonstration, please. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> Here, smell this. It'll make you feel better. <laughs> oh. 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 Boy, oh boy, uh, can I take it, huh? Yes, you can. Yeah. Did the grandstand fall on me? No, it was just the opposing team. Oh, just let them in. That's all. Uh huh. Well, you see, you were unconscious for a minute. Yeah, I guess I was. Eh? How does it feel to be unconscious? Uh, well, you ought to know. You've been that way all your life. <laughs> oh, you little flatterer. Say, listen, do you see that pail of water over there? Will yeah. you do me a favor? Sure. Well, stick your head in there three times and take it out twice. <laughs> Isn't that a coincidence? I had the same offer from another boy last week, only he wanted me to do it in the lake. Yeah. Oh, say, Coach, how many years do you get in jail for choking a dame like that? Well, anywhere from five to ten. Yeah, well, it's worth it. <laughs> Did you enjoy that? Well, I enjoyed making them. Bob Hope is a great person to work with. I've known him a long time. And the Edgar Bergen, he's a ventriloquist that you saw there. He's also the father of Murphy Brown, who's on TV. And she's known as the Dime Lady. And now you're in for a real treat. We're going to show you some blackouts that we do in vaudeville. They do it, and then they're out. And now, a scene written by the inmates of an insane asylum, using, using just, just one word. Ah! Ah! Yeah, what about it? Well, can you get me a job in the movies? Well, that all depends. Have you ever done anything famous or important before? Oh, yes. I saved a man from drowning. There he was out of the middle of the lake. What do you think I did? I dove in and I swam. And I swam. And I swam. Wait a minute. What kind of stroke is that? That's a sunstroke. I swam. And I brought that man to shore. And what do you think happened? After I saved the man from drowning, the man committed suicide by hanging himself to a tree. Wait a minute. If you, if you saved him from drowning, why didn't you save him from hanging himself? I thought he hung himself up to dry. <gasps> well, that was pretty good, but you have to do something really outstanding. Well, I'll do something. Lindbergh crossed the ocean in an airplane. I'm going to cross the ocean in a rowboat. A rowboat? Yeah. What are you going to do if a big wind comes up like a tornado? I'll throw out an anchor. No, what are you going to do if a really big wind comes up like a cyclone? I'll throw out another anchor. What are you going to do if a really big wind comes along like a hurricane? I'll throw out another anchor. Wait a minute. Where are you getting all these anchors? Yeah, well, where are you getting all that wind? 
Once upon a time, in far-off China, lived a very wealthy Mandarin. His house was called the Palace of Two. This Mandarin had three very lovely daughters. And one day, a young man came and said, Oh, Mandarin, I come to receive your blessings. You see, I would like to marry one of your daughters. So the Mandarin said, Which one of my daughters are you interested in, young man? He says, Oh, the young man said, I do not know their names. Well, said the Mandarin, Number one daughter, her name is Too Young Too. Number two daughter, her name is No Yen Too. Number three daughter, her name is Too Dumb Too. So the young man said, Mm. Ah, I take daughter number three, too dumb to, and I show her how to. Years ago, there was a very handsome movie star called Rudolph Valentino. He'd ride across the screen, bigger than life, saving young maidens from evil bandits and breaking hearts wherever he went. Just like this one. Oh, <laughs> I think he likes me. <laughs> That's the sheik of Araby. <laughs> Say, after our movie star made his picture, someone wrote a song. And now we're going to do that song for you right now. And every time I point at you, you must say, with no pants on. All right, ready? Okay, I'm the sheik of Araby. With no pants on. Your love belongs to me. With no pants on. At night when you're asleep. With no pants on. Into your tent I'll creep. With no pants on. The stars that shine above will lead our way to love. With no pants on. You'll rule this world with me. With no pants on. I'm the sheik of Araby. With no pants on. We definitely have to have clean towels. I must go now. Please call back later. Yes, sir. Good evening. Welcome to the Carmen Hotel. Uh, I'd like a room, please. Certainly. That would be no problem. And uh, how many will be staying tonight? What? Uh, how many tonight? It would be uh, me and my wife. Very yes, well. My, okay. My if wife. you would please uh, sign the register right here. You're very lucky, Mr. Smith. Yes. We have a Mrs. excellent room. Actually, this is the bridal suite. Oh, very Number good. six down the hall, Number just six. past the elevators. It has a wonderful view of the hills and the valleys. Five hundred six. Ah, good morning, Mrs. Smith. Uh, Mr. Smith, how are you all right? Uh, what can we do for you today? I'd like to... Pay in full, please. Okay, uh, very well. I was just working on the bill here, sir. You'll notice the total comes to $987. $900? I was and, here for only one night. Well, uh, of course, sir, but uh, Mrs. Smith has been here for three months. Oh. Hey, Pa. Hey, Pa. Do I have to remind you that this is our 25th wedding anniversary tonight? Not now. I'm reading the paper. Yeah. Oh, come on, Pa. Let's go to bed. This is interesting. Yeah, but I even put my baby doll on for you. This should really a Kasadi. This is really interesting. I can remember back 25 years ago in this very night when you wouldn't give me time to take off my stockings. Yeah, well, tonight you're going to have enough time to knit a pair. Oh, 
Oh, the blackouts are over. Wait a minute. What's going on here? All the lights are off. Wait a minute. Oh, for goodness sake, run the LaRue picture. <laughs> Austin's a wonderful town. Have you ever been to Austin, Mr. Thorne? You know, in show business, it doesn't pay to be attached to any town. You're sort of on the move. Uh, have you ever been in show business, Mr. Thorne? Oh, of course not. You're the nice, peaceful type. Uh, what sort of entertainment do, do you like, Mr. Thorne? Well, uh, me, I like solitaire. Do you play solitaire, Mr. Thorne? I think it's a wonderful game. You know, Mr. Thorne, you haven't said one word since we've left Sacramento. I haven't had an opportunity, but I have plenty to say if you'd give me a chance. Oh, Mr. Thorne, and this is so sudden, you've only just met me. Keep driving. I'll take care of those doors. Everybody out. Oh, oh, how exciting! We're being held up by black bars. You know, you know, I've never been in a robbery before. <laughs> this is fun. Don't you worry about a thing, Mr. Bard. I'll help you. Look, everybody, everybody, put your money right in here. Hey, wait, 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 wait a minute, young lady. Yeah, this isn't Black Bart. This is the young man that helped me run off the bandits. We're indebted to you, young man. My name's Jim Thorne. Jim Thorne. I'm in luck. I was coming to Baldwin City to see you. Well, if you're, if you're not Black Bart, who, who are you? My name's Garrett. Jack Garrett. Say, Joe, Wells Fargo's pulling in. <laughs> She had her eyes like a porcupine in the moonlight. And that's getting romantic where I come from. Looks like she's got the goods on you, Fuzzy. Sure has. But don't worry, I'll be your best man. You're not going to stand there and let this critter hogtie your old pal, are you? I'm sorry, Fuzzy. I'm leaving for the marshal's office. Leaving? Leaving? Why didn't I think of that? Me? Do your duty. Come back here, you coward! My life has been a long journey, but a good one. From backstage dressing rooms down south to the Palladium in London, where I met Edward, the Prince of Wales, and together we danced the Lambeth Walk. I've trod the boards with many of your famous stars of yesteryears, such as my friends the Broom Brothers, Ethel Merman, Dick Powell, Jim and Mildred Mulcahy, Abbott and Costello, Johnny Perkins, Joe Rollo, 
Harris and Carolyn Ross. My husband had a saying which is very apropos, to meet, to know, to love, to part. That is the sorrows of a trooper's heart. My husband Ron and my son Tim, we produced many motion pictures together, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. But now it's time to say goodbye to all my friends in vaudeville, and I'd like to do it with a little poem about hands. Do you ever realize how important your hands can be? You see, hands can plead, and hands can defy, and hands can give you a black eye, caress you and pet you, and put you to sleep like mother this way. And when you've been working and you're tired and you're hot, you don't need a hanky when your hands you've got. Because the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, they all use their hands, hands, hands. There are hands that make us happy. There are hands that steal our dough. There are hands that chase away the sunlight. Hands that tell us when to stop and go. But the hands that make me oh so happy are your hands that give me a hand. And so, dear friends in vaudeville, I want to leave you with this little message. Remember me as I remember you. Good night. When you're feeling low, not Traveling toward the Pacific, stop in the old park today. Pick up some hillbilly talent, send the show on its way. And when Hollywood sees your act, it's good. Come then on, it's a breeze. You will kill them when you're on film. You all right? Good. Let's play. Here is a bit that I do, but... Oh, 